Hello and welcome to Let's Play Resident Evil on the Sony PlayStation. Um, I'm no expert at this game, so this isn't going to be a speed run or a perfect playthrough or anything like that. I'm just going to go through the game as best as I can and try not to die, really. Um, I'll also try and find every single pickup as well. Um, if I do miss an item, just let me know by leaving a comment, and if you leave it in time, I might be able to go back to the item. Um, I'll be completing the game twice, once as Chris and once as Jill. Um, I'll be playing as Chris first. Um, in my opinion, um, and probably everyone else's opinion as well actually, um, Chris's scenario is uh, the harder of the two. Um, Chris only has, if I remember correctly, um, six item slots, whereas Jill has eight. Um, and Chris, most annoyingly, has to find small keys to open the desk drawers, um, whereas Jill can use her lockpick. Um, Jill can also use her lockpick to open some of the mansion doors, whereas Chris has to find another mansion key. Um, the only advantage to playing as Chris uh, that I know of is um, Chris has a higher tolerance for damage, so he can take more hits until he dies, really. Um, yeah, so I only actually completed this game for the first time about 10 years ago, um, even though I've owned the game for about 15 years. Um, Resident Evil 3 was the first Resident Evil. Um, uh, that was the first Resident Evil game that, that I played and completed, um, and it's more of an action-orientated game, really, in my opinion. That where, whereas this is more a puzzler. So, um, playing this one after the third one, it, um, it didn't seem it didn't seem as good as Resident Evil 3, even though now this is really my favourite Resident Evil. Um, yeah, um, and also, uh, I think the atmosphere of the game sort of um, it worked too well on me as well when I first got this game. Good yeah, because it is actually quite frightening, um, especially near the start. So um, I was a bit of a wimp uh, when I was younger, and I was too scared to play this game. Even though, I, even though by the time I'd uh, bought this game, I'd already played and completed several times Silent Hill. So I don't know why this game scared me when that one sort of didn't. Anyway, so let's get out of this if I can. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so yeah, um, there actually uh, there were different endings to this game. Um, you can get a bad ending and you can get a good ending or something like that. I'll be going for the good endings all the time. Um, I think the good endings mean that you that you rescue both your uh, companions. I think um, each character has two. Uh, with Chris, it's Rebecca and Jill, and with Jill it's Barry and Chris, yeah that's right, so if you rescue both of them that's the best ending, and depending on what you do in the game, um, we'll, um, yeah, uh, that, will um, that will change whether you uh, whether you rescue them or not. Um, rescuing uh, Chris or Jill is pretty easy, you just have to find all the MO discs, but rescuing the other character is a bit, is slightly, well, it, it isn't trickier, but it's more difficult to understand. Um, I think in Chris's scenario, um, you have to... There are two ways to meet Rebecca. You can either do it in the room under the stairs, and if you do that, I think that she always... And if you and if you answer a question um, and say yes, you allow her to follow you or something, even though she doesn't follow you, that means you've pretty much rescued her, I, I think. Um, but, uh, but if you meet her near the... There's a man, I can't remember his name, but there's someone who dies, and if you meet Rebecca near someone who dies, it's a bit harder to get, um, it's a bit harder, it's a bit harder to get Rebecca to follow you. You have to go and get the serum, uh, and bring it back to her within four minutes or something, otherwise, um, she's gone and she won't be able to follow you and, or something like that. Uh, there's an interesting post on the Game FAQ's message board um, about all this, and I'll provide a link to it, because it sort of explains all this, because it's really difficult to understand. Um... With Jill, it's easier to rescue Barry because you just have to make sure that uh, that you're always with him, really. Um, and especially when you're in the underground section, just make sure that you uh, that you don't try and get rid of him. So, um, it's, in my opinion, it's easier to rescue Barry than it is to rescue Rebecca, but they're both pretty easy to rescue, really. Anyway, so 
with all that explained, I shall play the game. Yeah, um, I'm not going to be using save states to save my game. I'm going to be, yeah, I'll only save my game with ink ribbons. So that's how this is going to work. So I'll see if I can find every ink ribbon. It's just a case in this game really just to search everywhere. That's all you have to do. Okay, so we're going to be playing as um, Chris first. So here we go. Chris Redfield. And then we have to sit through the opening movie that we've all seen a million times. But we're going to see it again. Raccoon Forest, 1998 July. Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we're searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle Chris, of our mission. You found it? No, I haven't found it yet. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about ten people. Victims were apparently eaten. Bravo team went to the hideout of the group and disappeared. Look, Chris! Really cheesy. It was Bravo team's helicopter. Nobody was in it. But strangely, most of the equipment was still there. However, we soon discovered why. Three stars members left now. Captain Wesker, Jill, and myself. We don't know where Barry is. Chris Redfield. Jill Valentine. Barry Burton. Rebecca Chambers. Albert Wesker. Resident Evil. They have escaped into the mansion where they thought it was safe, yet. I don't know what happened. Barry! Where's Barry? Well, I'm sorry, but he's probably... No. What is that? I'll go and check. Okay, Jill and I will stay in the hall in case of an emergency. Chris? Take care. 
Why do some video games always have to say their uh, their characters' blood types? What advantage is that? I mean, it happened in um, fighting games, in, in RPGs. What is the point of knowing a character's blood type? It has it doesn't help in the slightest. Anyway, yeah. So this room, when I first played this game, it actually scared me because it's sort of you know it's just uh, completely silent apart from the clock. Anyway, if we go back outside, I think this happens. Let's have a look. Investigate if you hear any gunfire. Yeah, so we're not allowed back in there until we um, until we investigate um, what made that bullet sound, gun sound. Anyway, so let's start exploring. Uh, here we have uh, a clock, a dusty looking grandfather clock. Someone who looks a bit like Jill, a picture of a woman, looks a bit like Jill with her berry. Um, with her beret. Did I say berry? Um, I meant beret. Anyway. Alright, so yeah, um, we can take the emblem now, but there's not really much point until until we've done something later. So, And we only have six item slots, so there's no point taking this emblem. In in the director's cut version, uh, that emblem is uh, is much harder to find. So, yeah. Anyway, we're um, we're about to meet our first zombie. You all know him. He's just to the left of Chris now. Yeah, he has white skin and he's munching on something. Okay, so I'm going to lure this zombie. I'll try and lure this zombie away because I want to get the the clips that um, that the zombie has. Now, in this game, for some reason, you can make the zombies walk against the wall a bit, which is so you can run past them more easily. Yeah, like that. There we go. Lovely. Okay, let's go and get the clips. He's Kenneth from the Stars Bravo team, and now he's become a mere shadow of his former self. Okay, yep, get the clips then. I think there's a... I can't remember how many there are, to be honest. One. Oh, no, there are two. Good. Right, now we have to make it past this zombie again without getting touched. Now, this is what I don't understand about zombies and zombie films in general. You know, they just... Uh... Yes, well done, right. Okay, good. That's the end of him. And we got past him without having to kill him. And we got the clips. Anyway, this is what I don't understand about zombies and um, zombie films and everything. And this game, uh, for example. Um, now, we're led to the... Um, we're led to believe that that zombie, he's he's a corpse that's come back to life, and his prime motivation is he's hungry and he wants to eat flesh, blah, 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 blah. Now, so that's his prime motivation that he wants to eat. Um, so then why does he get up when he sees us? I mean, because he's found um, what I can only assume is a relatively fresh meal, because the Stars Bravo team haven't been here for that long, so that corpse is pretty fresh, so he can munch on that. Why is he interested in us? If he just wants to eat us, he already has a fresh corpse there. I mean, it's like if you disturb a... Um, I mean, uh, just imagine it, um, if you had a bowl of ice cream and and then someone and it was a really nice ice cream you hadn't finished it yet and someone and then and then you walk and, and then someone walked past you with some more ice cream of exactly the same type. Uh, you wouldn't think to yourself, oh no, I'm not going to finish this ice cream. I'm going to go and um, take the other person's. But you already have some. So there's there's no point in in that zombie getting up uh, because he already has a meal because that's his only motivation. He's he's not evil. He's too stupid to be evil. His only motivation is to eat. So why does he get up when he sees us? Why does any zombie do that? Who are who, um, who are already eating? And and um, and, 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 and that sort of plot hole occurs on so many uh, zombie films. Uh, so many uh, zombie games. I just don't get it. I mean, the the only reason that they're even eating corpses isn't because they're evil. It's because they're hungry and they like doing it. So if they already have one, why have they want another? If they haven't finished the first one, anyway. So that's the only time I'm going to mention that. Anyway, so let's uh, let's go out now because we've explored the the gunshot. Wesker? Jill? What? 
happened to Jill and Wesker? Okay, so we have something here. I don't understand why Chris didn't have his own gun. Was it lost outside? I never understand that. It's Jill's gun. Will you take the Beretta? Yes, we will. Okay. Okay, so... How do we get to the item screen again? I can't remember. I forget. Uh, is it circle? I can't remember. Oh, it's the start button, yeah. It's the circle in Resident Evil 3 and Resident Evil 2, I think. So I've been playing that recently. So I haven't done this game for a while. It's actually the start button. Anyway, so um, that was um, an embarrassingly long time for me to find the, uh, 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 the menu screen. Anyway, so yeah, so let's have a look at the Beretta. Check it. Yeah, lovely, yeah. Uh, Beretta M92FS, automatic loaded with 9mm bullets. Yeah. How do we get out? I'm going to uh, the, the square button. That's how we uh, get out. Right. Check. Yep. Yes. Clip for Beretta. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't understand why the bullets are always in, in a clip um, that are perfectly uh, compatible with your gun. I mean, it's more believable having just boxes of bullets like they did in later games. Having a clip. I mean, it could be a clip for another model of gun that isn't and it won't fit inside. I, I don't understand that. Anyway, we have the knife, which we'll probably never use, uh, because it's useless, we all know the knife. This doesn't seem to be enough for this mission. Well, um, you tell that to the uh, to the madmen that, uh, that do knife-only runs, uh, and then come back to me. Right, first aid spray. Uh, I don't have a problem with using first aid sprays. I'm not going after a ranking. If they do affect ranking, I don't care. I, if, they, if they're there, I will use them. I, don't, I, um, I just don't care. Uh, I can heal my wound with this, my wound. That assumes you have a wound, which you don't, because you haven't been touched yet. Yet. Okay, so we only have six item slots. Now, let's have a look over here. Look at the old typewriter. And it already has an ink ribbon on it, so we will take that. Let's have a check of the ink ribbon. Yes, it's used with a typewriter. Okay. Okay, so we have two of them, and that's all we have to save our game. Let's have a quick look around this place. Yep, I said let's have a look around this place. There we go. No, there's nothing else. Now, I can't remember what's in this room. Fiddle dee let me think. We can't... Well, let's just have a look around, shall we? I think there's another ink ribbon we can get here. Right, let's uh, equip the gun. I forgot to do that. Let's do that now. Right, there's a yeah, there's a map or something. No, don't do that. Let's have a look at the pictures. A picture of s steep scenery. Nothing unusual. A picture of a beautiful woman. Nothing to bother about. I don't understand why the the owners of this place haven't turned all the lights off while the lights on. Their electricity bill must be through the roof. Nothing unusual. Did that say? Oh, and that doesn't actually comment on the, the picture this time. A beautiful oil painting. A woman drawing water. Alright, let's go and get the map. Just push this thing against the statue. There, uh, what's this? A picture of a chubby woman. Oh, um... Um, I didn't know you were like that, Chris, sort of insulting people's weight. Right, anyway, yeah, we can't get in there, it's locked. A carving of a sword. Now, um, that's the key that we need, that Jill doesn't need. So Jill can't get the sword key because she just has her lockpick. The lockpick opens all the sword doors in her, uh, in her game. Yeah, but in our game, um, in Chris's one, we have to get the sword key. It's a map of first floor. Will you take it? Yes, you've got the map of first floor. And by first floor, they mean the ground floor. Um, how they say it here, the ground floor, then first floor. But in America, I, th I think it's first floor, second floor, blah, blah, blah. Which is easier to remember, but in my opinion, makes less sense. Anyway, now, this place is optional. There isn't any weapon in here. There's just some ink ribbon. And there is a zombie in here, I think. Yeah, here he is. Now, there is a way past this without actually... If you touch him, he'll turn into an ankle biter and start um, hurting you a bit. But there is a way to get past him and get to the ink ribbon. I've done it before without actually touching him. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, 
I did touch him there, but he didn't seem to respond. That was that was lucky. Anyway, yes, there should be an ink ribbon here. Yep, here it is, good. Yes, there's another ink ribbon there, so that, uh, that's four now. And the items can stack on top of each other, which is handy. Now, to get out of here now without touching this man. Ha 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 ha. And you, my friend, will never, ever bother me again. Goodbye. Yeah, so if you touch him too much, more than I did there, he turns into an ankle biter and, you know, and then you have to kick his head off and whatnot. Anyway, so that's the end of that. We'll never go in in that room again with him. So that's another load of ink ribbon. Uh, so now what do we do? I can never remember what to do in this game. I haven't completed it that many times. Um, what's in here? Yes, get in the door, please. Doesn't seem to want to go in the door. Oh, it's locked again. A carving of armour, so we need the armour key for that one. Now, as far as I know, there's no way past that map. Well, there's nothing, well, where we saw the first zombie, there's nothing in there, really that we can do yet, because I think the doors are locked, so there's no point uh, going in there. Um, with Jill, she can use her lockpick and go into the door, that was the sword door, but we can't do that because we don't have a lockpick. So, we're going to go either way. I think the way I'm going to go is this way. Let's go out... Let's, let's go outside this way first. Um, Right, there's our first small key. It's sort of um, flashing at us. Uh, now, it's job. I'm, I'm nearly out of uh, item slots, and there's there's something out here that I need. So I'll have to leave that small key for a while. It doesn't matter. I'll get it later. Uh, I hope this blood isn't from my teammates. Well, you can tell how how sort of fresh it is because blood tends to go brown after it's been there a while. Alright, so now, I can't remember, I, I always get this version confused with, well, this game confused with the director's cut. Uh, does he come alive in this one? I don't think he does. I think some crows come or something. It's Forrest, he's been pecked to death by crows. Oh, here, here they come. Is he holding anything? Are you holding anything? Yes, he is. Alright, thank you. He's holding a clip. Anything else? No, nothing else. Let's get out of it. Oh, he got me. Come on. Yes, yes, come on. Yeah, because I know in Jill's scenario, he's holding something else, but obviously not in this one. I always get them confused. That hasn't really hurt us too much. No, yeah, we're still on fines. Yeah, uh, the crows don't really do that much damage. And as that was only a, a clip, we can still pick up this... What was it? I wasn't facing the door, was I? I was trying to pick up the key. Yeah, as we... that was only a clip, we can still pick up this small key, so let's do so now. Unfortunately, the small keys, um, yeah, they don't substitute for the lockpick in terms of the sword door. They only substitute the lockpick in terms of uh, uh, desk drawers, so we can't really use them to open a door. But if there's an item inside a, uh, a desk drawer, um, then we can get it. Uh, um, I'm pretty sure there are... Um, However many uh, locked desk drawers there are, there are enough keys to open every one of them, at least, in, at least if, I, if I remember correctly. Anyway, now we need to find an item uh, box to put all this stuff in because we can't pick up anything else. Alright, here we go. Oh, this place, right. Oh, we have Mr. Zombie. Um, yeah, go on, let's kill him. Ah, oh, I can't see him. Come on, yeah, two, three, four, five. Is he dead? I don't know. No, he's not. Right. Now he is. Right, good. It's in the him. Let's reload. Um, you don't have to be as uh, conservative with the bullets as you think. Though, um, I always end up with a surplus, even after killing loads and loads of stuff. Can we go in here? It's locked. Carving of armour. Yeah, we can't go in there yet. In here, locked, carving of armour, yep, armour, oh, another zombie, come in. Ah, oh, wasted a bullet, you git. There we go. 
Yeah, on the uh, director's cut, um, the gun can actually get random headshots. Although uh, some of the zombies are faster, so it's sort of like a trade-off. Yes, come on. Ah, oh, die! God damn you! Right. Thank you. Right, he's finished. Right, that's this area cleared out now. I don't have to worry about that now. Right, it's locked from inside. Oh yeah, I remember this place. Yeah. I think there's some more zombies here as well. Oh no, not um, not yet. I think all that's in here is this book, um, botany book. Um, about medicinal herbs. Let's have a read of this. As you may know, there are many plants that have um, medical effects. Since ancient times, humans have been healing wounds and diseases using various plants. In this book, we're going to sample three herbs that grow around the Raccoon Mountains and give their outlines as examples as examples of those plants with medical properties. Um, each herb has different colours and different effects as medical plants. The green one recovers physical strength, the blue one neutralises natural toxins, while the red herb does not have any effect by itself. Uh, the red herb is only effective when it is mixed with other herbs. Yeah, when you mix a red with a green, it's like, um, um, it's, it's pretty much a full heal. So if you mix um, three greens together, it's a full heal. Well, excuse um, um Accepting, um, of course, um, poison. But uh, th three greens together is a full heal. So a red and a green is like three greens. So you can save yourself two greens if you put a red with a green. That's how it works. Anyway, yeah, the red herb is only effective when it is mixed with other herbs. For example, if you mix this herb with the herb that recovers physical strength, the recovery effect will be tripled. Yeah, so, so it's worth... Uh, so the red herb mixed with the green herb means that it's like having two green herbs mixed with another green herb. So a red and green is like three greens. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm pretty, uh, I'm absolutely certain mixing red with blue does nothing. So it's, it's the only, that's the only thing red does. It's, it's just worth, it's just worth two greens really if you mix it with another green. Anyway. Um, by adjusting the amount and experimenting with these three herbs, you can create various kinds of medicines, but I'll leave the details in your hands, because that's the best way to acquire true knowledge. Okay, thank you very much for that. Right, even though I know there's nothing in here, I'll have another check, because I always do. Nothing uncommon. It's well arranged. What's over here? here? Nothing uncommon. Apart from the lights on, and so someone's left it on. Anything in the desk drawer, even though there isn't, but I'll check anyway. Nothing uncommon. Okay, let's get out of here. Unlocked it, lovely. Okay, there's a zombie, but we'll deal with him later, and that one later as well, because I'm going to, it's coming up to half an hour. Yeah, I forgot to mention I'm going to try and make these videos about half an hour long, so we're coming up to about 28 minutes. So I want to... Is there any enemies here? Oh yeah, they are as well. Ah, good. Yeah, good. Oh, there's a... Uh, come here. And I can't pick it up, just remembered, and I'm probably going to get bitten. Damn. No, come back. Yep, in there, right. Yeah, just remembered, yeah. I always forget that we, uh, that we already have any item slots for uh, for Chris. It's pretty annoying. Right, is there an ink ribbon here? No, no ink ribbon. Not yet, no. I want to put stuff in the thing. Yeah, there isn't one the other bit. I, was, um, I thought it might be another... Oh, whoops, didn't want to do that. No, don't say. Right, yeah, I, um, I thought there might be an ink ribbon on the other side of the typewriter. Okay, the, uh, that's the chemical. We'll pick that up in a sec. Let's put the knife away, stuff we don't need. Oh, we have two clips, lovely. Oh, yeah, unfortunately in this game we have to get things out before combining them. They made it in Resident Evil 2 so that you can combine things from the item box, but we can't in this one. Okay, let's put the knife away. Let's put this uh, first aid spray away. Let's put this... Uh, uh, not the ink ribbon away, let's put this small key away. We'll deal with that later. Um, let's combine the, the clips together. Oh, I didn't want to check. Yes, yep. There we go, so we have... Uh, 74 bullets now. Right, I just want to pick up that her that herb from outside before I leave, uh, before I end the video. With this damn zombie again. Yes, give me the herb. Right, so that's one green one. 
Yeah, I'm going to try and avoid zombies if I can. If they're easy to avoid, I will avoid them, otherwise I will kill them. I don't really mind doing either, to be honest, as long as I have the bullets to kill them. Right, there's the chemical. We'll nab that. We won't need that yet. Um, I know where we need that. Well, we all know where we need that, unless you've never played it before. Gardening tools, nothing useful. Um, okay, let's put the chemical away and the herb away. We don't really have item slots to muck around and um, carry stuff we don't need. Um, yep, yeah, so we're going to save it now. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching part one. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I mean, I have had a lot of requests for this game, which is why I've sort of succumbed to doing this uh, playthrough. But um, I must admit, it's a good excuse to play through this game again. I do really like it. Um, it is my favourite Resident Evil game. Um, um, yeah, ink ribbon, yep. Yeah. Right. I uh, can't remember how many virtual memory guard slots I have free. Yeah, there's, there's none on that one, so yeah, let's use the other one. Memory guard 2. There we go. Oh, there's another There's a, another, another game of Resident Evil that I've done. Um, so I'll, I'll save over that one. Yeah, I had a playthrough of Jill a while ago, so there's the save. Um, yeah, so save over this one. Yep. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So that's the end of that. So we've only been hurt once by crows, managed to dodge zombies, etc. Picked up some various things. So next video, continue exploring the mansion. Thank you for watching and goodbye.